Hello guys, welcome back to our MPESA series journey. In this episode, we are going to have a look at how we can be able to persist uh, the transaction responses that we are going to be getting from MPESA. Now, this is going to be a two part uh, episode. So, in this particular episode, we are going to look at which database we are going to use for our persistence and uh, how we can be able to set it up so number one thing that i would like to mention is that my preferred database of choice for this particular task would be mongodb which maybe as you may know that's just that's just uh, a no sql database and uh, maybe you might be asking why i chose a mongo database as opposed to say maybe a sql database in this case could be mysql postgre msql server oracle etc etc now number one thing that i would like to share is that in my opinion i feel like the metadata that we are basically getting from safaricom in this case from their callback urls in one way or another in my opinion i feel they are kind of unstructured and for that i feel that the best database of choice for this particular kind of a thing would be a nosql database now there has there are some pros as to why i chose again mongodb and in this case number one would be a nosql database is definitely going to be highly and easily scalable it's definitely going to give us the fast reads and writes and of course one other item is that uh, for a NoSQL database, we do not have, basically it's not a must for us to, to have a schema. So in this case, we can be able to basically persist data as it comes. So even if there are any modifications, we do not need to say, come back with the DB, add another column, A, B, C, D, such kind of a thing. So it's just a matter of give me this data, I just like, throw it back to, to MongoDB and Mongo is going to persist uh, that data for us. Now, let us now go ahead and do the basic configurations for Mongo. So number one thing that I did is that I added this uh, compose file. It's basically a Docker compose file which basically is going to download our mongodb instance as a docker image now feel free to use your preferred way of setting up mongo you could decide to go with bare metal in this case just install it on your machine the standalone the exes etc etc you could even decide to use uh, database service providers right so feel free to use your preferred choice of mongo but in my case i'm going to use uh mongo wired up from a docker compose file all right so uh at the description of this video i'm going to post a link where you'll be able to find uh the basic setup as it is on this episode and you can be able to build on top of this as you progress on the other episodes all right so basically what this does the whole of this stuff what it basically does is we are basically going to download a mongo image so we're going to download the version 4 so we're going to wire up uh that mongo instance from port to 7080 but internally within the doc container is going to be running on to 7017 the default port so basically we are exposing the internal port to external host on to 7080 so here we're basically creating the volumes eh, so that uh, we can have persistence all right so once this is done now i can be able to come now to my terminal so for this to work also make sure that you've uh, installed uh docker you know on your, on your machine that is especially if you're going to use uh, my approach of doing things right so let's have a look at where we are all right here it is so uh hold on one moment so we are going to basically now wire up our mongodb instance and then we're going to set up a project to connect to our 
MongoDB. All right. So that being said, uh, I'm going now to come here and say Docker compose minus f our MongoDB file. Then I'm going to say up. Basically now to bring it up. All right. So I'm going to see it is going to start. All right. So so far so good. Looks like it is working. So the other thing that we'll need to do on our part is if you haven't done so if you go to pop xml file you'll be able to see that there is a dependency for mongo that i added all right which is this one so you can go ahead and also add this particular dependency if you've not added after adding that now we can come to our application yaml file and now set up our connection values all right so in this case i'm just going to come here and say mongo so we can give you can see the host the host this is going to be localhost all right on the port in this case we did say that the external port is 270 80 all right so i'm going to put it at 270 80 feel free to edit this one as appropriate but the 2717 leave it as it is all right now after setting the port we can now set the database name all right so in this case my database i'm going to call it daraja daraja db all right now that's just the bare minimum that we need to do for us to set up mongo now if you now run this particular application let's see what's going to happen cool if you have been following along our previous episodes you may have noticed that there was an error that was being thrown when we were running our application and the error that was being thrown was it was not able to connect to a mongodb instance and that is because by default by the time we were starting this series i had added this dependency so each time the application was running it was trying to connect to uh mongodb by default on port 27070 even if we did not set this so by default it was trying to connect to port 27017 all right so as you can see here we've already opened a connection on port 27080 and 27080 so with that at least now we know that our application is able to connect to our mongo database instance and in this case we're not going to use any form of authentication because this is basically more of a demonstration purposes but if you'd like to set your username and password by all means proceed and do it so the other thing that i would like to mention is to introduce a tool called mongodb compass so basically this is just an ide that is going to help us uh, view data that we are going to be persisting in our in our mongodb so head over to this url all right so basically it's going to be that url so where we should be able to download mongo compass all right once that is done download depending of course with your operating system once you have done that and installed then open your instance so this is my case mongodb so let it initialize right give it a minute or two cool now i'm going to here click fill in connection fields individually so in my case i'm going to open on localhost the port is going to be 270 270 80 right now i'm going out to come and connect all right let's see if it's going to get and we are in all right as you can see we are able now to connect to our mongo db from here now henceforth we are going to look at uh, how we can be able maybe to now create the repositories and the various methods which are going to help us persist uh, the transaction data that we're going to be receiving from mpesa and we will do that in our next episode so make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be updated when that episode will be uploaded see you in the next one goodbye